Before we get started, my name is Eunice and welcome to the adventures of Eunice and Joshua Wanza. Hola! Hi everybody, welcome back to the video. Gusto ko na mag-umpisa, but if you haven't watched the first part of this J2 Visa series, please go to this link watch the video so this video will discuss the interview questions i encountered during my interview at the manila u.s embassy and kung ano rin po yung mga sagot ko i also include in this video the process of booking my flight getting my rt-pcr test my doh vaccination certificate uh the cdc attestation form and some tips as I fly to the U.S. Bonus, I also added here the set of questions that the U.S. immigration officer asked me when I was traveling here. So if you want to know more of that, please continue watching. Okay, before we start, here are some things that you should take note before going to the U.S. Embassy. So pagdating nyo sa U.S. Embassy, kailangan nyo pong pumila according sa inyong oras. Hindi pa po kayo papapasukin dito ha. Nandun pa lang kayo sa mismong labas ng US Embassy at papipilahin kayo ng guard according sa time slot na inyong nabook. So if you're for 7 a.m., kailangan nandun ka na at 6 a.m. at nakapila ka na. So ang first part is checking of your passport and BS 2019. Okay? So, i-staple yan nung Pilipino na nasa labas at bibigyan niya ng sticker ang inyong passport. Tapos, dadiretsyo na kayo sa loob. Pagdating sa loob, maghihintay kayo ng medyo matagal-tagal lang naman. Pero, papapasukin din kayo. At doon na explain sa inyo yung tatlong stage na pagdadaanan nyo. So, the first part is the screening of papers. Um, pipila kayo sa isang window kung saan iaabot nyo ang inyong passport ang inyong DS-2019 at a marriage contract. And if kung meron pang supporting documents na kailangan to prove your relationship sa inyong asawa. Kung may dala kayong mga bata or may dala kayong mga anak, importante din po na dala nyo ang in kanilang, na dala nyo ang kanilang original birth certificate. And it should be PSA authenticated. So sa first window, tinanong po sa akin kung ano ang purpose ng pag-travel ko sa US. So, I answered that I will be following my husband and staying with him. The second question is, what is my full name and what is my maiden name? Since ako po ay kasal. So, syempre, binagit ko yung pangalan ko and yung aking maiden name. After that, mabilis lang po yung proseso, pumila na ako sa second window. So, for the second part, Kukunin po dito ang aking biometrics. Daladala ko pa rin ang aking passport at ang naka-attach na DS-2019. Pagdating doon, tinanong ako, what is my full name? So, binanggit ko kasama na rin ang aking maiden name. And then the second one is, tinanong din ako kung kailan ang birthday ko. Medyo nag-stutter pa nga ako eh, kasi parang huh, medyo nakakakaba talaga. So, eto na yung third part na medyo... Uh, kinakatakutan ng marami at kinakabahan ang marami. So, the third part is uh, the interview with the consul. So, over the window pa rin ito, hindi ito naka-private room. So, the, before she or he, the consul, start the interview, hihingin niya muna ang inyong passport at ang inyong DS-2019. The best way to shake off your um, ang tawag dito? <laughs> your kaba is to smile, kahit nakamask po kayo, okay, uh, is to smile and greet them, good afternoon or good morning, ganyan. So, para mawala lang yung tension. And then, the consul will ask, why are you going to the US? So, sasabihin nyo ulit, nasusunod kayo sa asawa nyo, I'm going after my spouse, and we want us to be reunited. So, yun yung sinagot ko. And then, it was followed by the question, what is your husband's work? So, syempre, simple lang ang sagot. Sabi ko sa kanya, my husband is a public teacher. Dinanong ulit sa akin, 
what is the name of the school and in what state? Sabi ko, he's uh, working at district ganito, ganyan, at sa state na ganito. It's very important na maging clear at maging accurate po ang sagot nyo. It's because nasa DS2019 po ang sagot. So make sure na nabasa nyo po ang inyong uh, DS2019 bago pumunta sa US Embassy. Okay, the next question na tinanong sa akin ay, How long has he been staying in the US? So, gano'n na daw katagal? So, sinagot ko, 6 months na ang asawa kong nagtatrabaho sa US. And then, it was followed by a question. Uh, Tagalog na lang, no? Bakit kasusunod sa kanya ngayon? Bakit hindi kayo nagsabay nung umalis siya? So, medyo nag-stutter ako sa part na yun kasi hindi ako prepared for that question. So, eh, sabihin ko sa inyo yung sinagot ko. It was a personal answer. Uh, we lost our child and sabi ko sa consul, I'm taking my time to recover and it was not the best time for me to uh, to travel with my husband. Pero sa iba, ang typical answer nila ay my spouse needs time to adjust with the culture, with the way of living in the US. He needs to get an apartment for us or you can also say na Around that time, I don't have my passport yet, so I was not able to travel with my spouse. Please take note lang na huwag kayong sasagot ng kahit anong related sa finances. Or sasagutin nyo na, oh, we, we, we really don't have enough money that time to travel together. So, it's a no-no. Okay, anything that's related to your finance, huwag nyo na pong banggitin. <music> And then, after that, uh, kinuha lang niya yung aking marriage contract. Okay, chinek niya lang yon. Binerify niya lang kung kailan kami kinasal, ganyan. So, ayun, madali lang yun at personal na lang po yun. Sasagutin yun. After that, sabi niya sa akin, congratulations, you will receive your visa in one to two weeks. Pero sa totoo lang po, dumating ang aking visa via LBC. Mga three days after po ng aking interview. So, after getting my passport, what's next? Should you book already? Or should you wait for more? So, here are the pre-departure shenanigans. I would suggest that you book a flight two weeks prior para mas mura yung flight nyo. In this section, we shall also cover the Vaxxer RT-PCR test and the CDC attestation form. Uh, after I got my passport with my visa, hindi mo na ako nagbook ng flight. Naghanap mo na ako ng airlines na mura, and of course I have to read kung ano yung mga requirements ng mga airlines na to. So some of the airlines na nagta travel po dito sa US with connecting flights are Japan Airlines, Philippine Airlines, Ana Airlines, Qatar Airlines, Etihad Airlines. Those are just some of the airlines that I already uh, encountered. Pero out of the six, ang pinakamababang flight na nahanap ko ay through Etihad Airlines. Kaya ang i-discuss natin sa video na to ay yung proseso ng Etihad Airlines. So before booking my flight, I made sure uh, to contact yung asawa ko and tell him na ito yung mga options uh, ng flights. So after I book my plane ticket, I forwarded that uh, reference number and the ticket number to our visa sponsor. The reason why I did that is because they need to activate my insurance upon arriving here in the US. So what are the things that you need to prepare before flying? Okay? So syempre, yung mga gamit mo, yung mga kailangan mo, the basic essentials, no? I don't know if you want to cover that video, pero... Let me know in the comment section para makagawa ako ng separate video kung paano ka nag-prepare papunta dito. At kung ano yung mga dala-dala ko. So the next thing to do is to actually find a diagnostic center that can cater or that can give you result within 12 hours. Please note that the requirement for the airlines is RT-PCR test. Some people says na tumatanggap na ng antigen test pero for international flights, 
ang pinaka-tinatanggap pa rin po ay ang RT-PCR test. So as for me, since I live around Metro Manila, nahanap ko po ang Manila Health Tech sa Marikina City at doon po ako nagpa-swab or nagpa-RT-PCR test. So if you are coming from the province and you need a domestic flight, uh, separate pa po yung mga requirements nyo doon. So I would suggest na kapag nag-book po kayo ng flight, hindi po matagal lang inyong um, paghihintay para sa inyong flight going to the US. Dapat pasok pa rin po siya. So for example, my flight was February 4. And my RT-PCR test was taken February 3. And the result came out February 3 din. So, wala naman po naging problema nung pinresent ko ang aking um, RT-PCR test result sa check-in counter ng Etihad Airlines. So, with Etihad, meron po silang tinatawag na verified to fly. So, importante na i-upload ang copy ng passport ko. Um, in-upload ko rin ang aking vaccination certificate at makakuha at makakakuha po kayo ng libreng vaccination certificate sa website na to. And then, I have to upload my negative result of RT-PCR test at least one hour before flying. So, pagdating ko naman sa airport, sa Naiya Terminal 3, uh, I have to pass through the Philippine Immigration. So, they ask me, bakit ako pupunta sa U.S.? Um, anang visa meron ako and hinanapan po nila ako ng CFO para sa mga J1 holder lamang po ang CFO at kung kayo ay J2 visa holder hindi nyo po kailangan ng CFO so dahil alam ko yun sinabi ko sa, sa immigration officer na sir hindi ko po kailangan ng CFO kasi ako po ay J2 dependent lamang and then after that uh, lumabas lang siya Tapos, binalikan niya ako and said na okay na, pwede na ako mag-pass through. Tapos, dati isang beses ka lang magpa-pass through sa immigration. May pangalawa pa. At ayun ay malapit na sa pila ng pag-check ng iyong baggage. So, for those who already fly out of the country, alam niyo yan, isang beses lang kayo magdadaan sa immigration officer. This time, dalawang beses. So, nagtaka ko nun, bakit dalawa na yung immigration officer? but sila nag -ipit? But anyway, so, ayun na nga, um, mabilis lang din naman akong pinadaan, pinacheck lang sa akin yung passport ko and yung visa na hawak ko. Okay, so, once um, I arrive at Abu Dhabi, um, Abu Dhabi International Airport, dali-dali kong hinanap yung aking boarding gate. So, the boarding gate for the US pre-departure area is at gate 60 to 61. Uh, mahaba po yung pilad papunta doon and doon po ako nakakuha ng CDC attestation form. So, kung ayaw nyo na pong ma-stress sa kakahanap kung saan kukunin yung form na yon, I highly suggest that you printed out a CDC attestation form and the link is here. Nandyan din sa description box. Mag-print na po kayo. So, ano yung nakalagay sa attestation form? So, basically, it's a form that says that you have been vaccinated. And nandun yung pangalan mo and your printed name and the date. That's all. So, yung attestation form ay kukunin sa US pre-departure area bago po kayo, um, bago po dalin yung mga gamit nyo sa security check, um, hihingin muna ng immigration officer yung attestation, dadaan ulit kayo ng security check, and then you will meet the US immigration officer. So, eto na yung mga tanong sa akin ng US immigration officer. So, the immigration officer at Abu Dhabi International Airport asked me the following question. What is my purpose traveling in the U.S.? What is my husband's work and um, how long he has been staying in the U.S.? Uh, where, where are we going to live? And then, he also asked if I have the following things inside my bag. Baguong, manga, chicharon any seeds or anything. So, syempre, all my answer is no. 
wala naman ako mga dalang pasalubong, bagoong toyo or anything. And it's just that, in my surprise, I ask him, how did you know those Filipino food? So, syempre, nag-share din siya ng buhay niya. So, sabi niya sa akin, he is actually married to a Filipina. So, when we are talking to an immigration officer, kahit na masungit sila, try to be as friendly as possible, try to smile, try to to lighten up the mood, lalo na kung kinakabahan kayo. So, ayun lang. I hope my little story time and my little experience will help you as you uh, travel here in the U.S. and as you get to be reunited with your loved ones. I really hope and pray na makasama niyo po ang inyong mga asawa at ng inyong mga anak. Again, this is Eunice and I hope that you subscribe in this video if it's if it's not too much to ask, you know, please support this channel. And I'll be sharing more information about the J2 visa um, experience as I leave here. It's only been five days since I was here. <laughs> I also wanted to take this opportunity to invite you sa Facebook group na ginawa ko for J2 visa uh, holders na paparating dito sa US. It's because I, I want to meet you. I want to, to know more about you and to share experience with you. And it's kind of lonely, you know, being alone in in the apartment because your your spouse is working. So, ayan. Sa susunod naman video, pag-usapan naman natin kung ano yung mga dapat nating i-prepare sa... Uh, kung ano yung mga dapat nating i-prepare as J2 visa holder as we apply for the work authorization permit. Okay? So, isa yan sa mga nire-research ko as of now. And pagdadaanan ko rin sa mga susunod na buwan. So, see you again on the next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!